morning. Bonjour. May I say at the outset that last week uh, the City Council of Toronto joined many of you in declaring a climate emergency and the resolution was passed by the City Council unanimously and I was proud to co-sponsor it with Councillor Mike Layton who is here today uh, supported uh, completely by Deputy Mayor Michael Thompson and uh, Councillor Jennifer McKelvey who are also here and I think it was meant uh, to indicate as many of you have uh, a commitment that we have to tackling uh, climate change to standing together and nous allons travailler ensemble comme nous le devons si nous voulons régler le problème urgent comme uh, le voudraient les gens. Cities, I think we've heard this morning, we know in our heart of hearts are going to make a difference on this because we know that cities drive change. Cities don't have the option uh, most of the time to ignore something that is in front of us. Reality uh, meets us on the streets uh, each and every day uh, in our uh, respective responsibilities. And so in Toronto we have a plan uh, called Transform TO to reduce our carbon emissions and it's a plan that's on track. I'm pleased to say we've already met our 2020 uh, targets and we're on track to meet our 2030 targets. The Transform TO program has led to things like a $63 million uh, en energy retrofit in our social housing buildings, and that's a work in progress, $63 million so far. $500 million raised through two uh, of Canada's first municipal green bond issues to go towards green projects like transit retrofits, uh, like uh, investments in cycling infrastructure. Um, but we still confront the two biggest challenges that many of you face, the two biggest sources of emissions, uh, transportation and building uh, related. Transportation represents 38%. I think there's a misapprehension on the part of a lot of people in our city that it would be first. But in fact, it's second at 38%, buildings uh, being first at 52% of overall GHG emissions for the city. Uh, while other cities have tools at their disposal, as we heard earlier today, legislative tools, we don't. And so we've had to uh, do something else uh, that is more collaborative in nature, as cities often have to do, and that is why I want to talk to you about the Green Will Initiative. What we've done, at my invitation, and people do come, as you know, because we do have the power to convene, is we brought together a collection of Toronto's largest private commercial landowners, institutional partners, including universities, hospitals, uh, school boards, and together the ones so far that have come to the table, and we're still working on it, represent more than 300 million square feet of building space. Uh, I'd like to grow it to half a billion square feet of building space or more, if we possibly can. And as you know, within a group like that, you would have different levels of achievement so far in terms of things that have been done to uh, create energy efficiency and reduce uh, emissions. Uh, so we've got a program with four stages, the first being auditing and benchmarking so that we can measure uh, what uh, we're, uh, we're trying to reduce. Then we move on to retrofit capital planning and that includes us uh, helping to provide a range of services, us meaning the city, including business case support, uh, pursuing financing and advocating uh, to other levels of government for major retrofit initiatives. And then the final stage, uh, which is continuous improvement. And what we're going to be doing is setting five-year incremental targets along the way uh, so that we can actually measure as opposed to leaving it all uh, to measure until the end. With a Part of the key being uh, to share knowledge and to share best practices. A lot of those who are in the larger parts of the private sector uh, building owning uh, fraternity uh, have already done uh, quite a few things and they have practices, they have procurement, they have other things they can share with the objective ultimately of making sure that that person who owns the small three-story medical building as a family investment also is able to join because as we all know there are thousands of those uh, buildings that have to be uh, brought into this task as well. And that's so, so, so often how we make change, as you know. We don't have the super lawmaking powers that can force people to take action. We have to rely on collaboration. And so we started with the hospitals, with the school boards, with the large landowners, with the universities, with our very own city buildings. Uh, and so uh, we're moving forward uh, to deal with that now. If we want to reduce our carbon footprint, we have to start today. And we have to start with one of the areas, this one being the very biggest uh, contributor. And I will just uh, say to you that I know I speak for my council colleagues and for all the people of the City of Toronto and assuring all of you uh, that we are there, that our determination will remain absolute uh, going forward and that I look forward to reporting to you at a future summit uh, on the progress that we've made on this and many other initiatives that we're taking going forward. Thank you very much. Merci.